Hello everyone out there, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to eat healthy on a budget and 20 money-saving grocery shopping hacks and tips. Over the years, as I have shared health and nutrition content here on YouTube, um, I have been asked many times, how can we eat healthy on a budget? How can we save money when it comes to eating healthy? Because it can be expensive. And especially nowadays, I am sure many of you have noticed your grocery bills increasing quite a bit. We certainly have. Um, groceries have gone up in price, you know, food prices, so many things have the past couple of years. I've got all kinds of tips to share with you. I'm gonna run through them all in this video. I hope you find this helpful and let's dive right in. Number one, is to make a meal plan based on what is on sale that week at the grocery store and making a grocery list and really sticking to it. Go online, check flyers, see what is on sale and meal plan around that. A lot of you guys know that I am quite the meal planner. I meal plan every single week and meal planning generally can help you save money because you know exactly what foods you're gonna need for the week and you shop based on those exact things and it helps to reduce food waste in that way. Number two, is to shop your pantry and your freezer before you head to the store. In other words, check to make sure what you have on hand before you even head to the grocery store. This has happened to me so many times where I buy, I don't know, a bottle of vinegar or something and I come home and I realize that I had like a full unopened bottle already somewhere in my pantry. So before you head to the store, just double check. Just take a look at what you have got going on in your fridge, in your freezer, in your pantry. Number three is to take advantage of inherently cheaper produce. So vegetables like Napa cabbage or other cabbages, um, broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, potato, root veggies like carrots. Find ways to incorporate more of these kind of affordable veggies in your meals throughout the week. Some of my favorite ways to use these include things like stir fries, stews, um, even like doing a coleslaw as like a nice side dish. Roasting up veggies is a great way to use some of these things throughout the week. Number four is to look for discounted produce if you think that you can eat it fast enough. A lot of grocery stores will have racks with fruits and veggies, sometimes other items that they have discounted because they might be going bad soon. Um, of course, you wanna make sure that you think that you can actually make use of these things, but sometimes you can find you know, ripe bananas that are half off that you can really easily whip up into banana muffins for some snacks through the week um, and other types of vegetables that you can really easily toss into soups and stews or stir fries. Number five is to buy frozen fruits and vegetables. These are cheaper than your fresh counterparts. Of course, fresh produce is wonderful too, but frozen food, frozen fruits and veggies um, are just as nutritious. A lot of times things like berries have been frozen um, after they've been picked at ripe, at peak ripeness. So they're just as nutritious and they will save you money, especially if you find that you tend to um, leave some fresh produce in your fridge that doesn't get used up quick enough. This is another way that it helps uh, as well is with reducing that food waste because frozen food, frozen fruits and veggies are gonna last so much longer. So take advantage of frozen fruits and veggies. I certainly do. I always love to have things like frozen green beans, frozen peas, frozen cauliflower. I like to toss that in my smoothies um, and lots and lots of frozen fruit and berries I have in my freezer stocked up at all times. Number six is to choose cheaper nuts and seeds. Gram for gram, sunflower seeds and walnuts are actually the less expensive option. So if you are someone who is looking to add some more nuts and seeds to your grocery cart this coming week, try those ones. Try sunflower seeds, try walnuts. They still have a fantastic source of fiber, healthy fats, plenty of vitamins and minerals and antioxidants that are great for your health. They're are just not quite as expensive as other nuts like almonds or cashews or pecans and things like that. Number seven, let's talk about beans. 
beans, lentils. These are such a fantastic cost-effective food. Um, I'm talking chickpeas, pinto beans, red lentils, green lentils, black beans, all these wonderful beans are very, very affordable, a great source of protein and fiber and they're filling. Um, really great to stock up on and to choose more often. Now, dried beans and lentils are also going to be even more cost-effective than canned, so something to keep in mind. Does tend to require a little bit more kind of food prep time and effort. Um, you know, sometimes you have to rinse these things, strain these things, boil these things before you can use them, but it will save you money in the long run. I love using beans in curries and soups and on top of salads and also in reducing my animal protein and kind of using beans and lentils to kind of replace some of that, which brings me to my next point, and that is to basically just reduce meat in your recipes. This will definitely save you money because meat is pretty expensive, especially if you try to opt for pasture-raised organic meats, which can be much better for our health as well as the health of the planet, but we can just reduce the amount that we are purchasing meat overall. And something that I like to do is to um, kind of, you know, cut some of the meat in half in a recipe. For example, if I'm making a spaghetti, instead of doing a pound of ground beef, cutting that in half or even using less than half and replacing the rest with some kind of bean or lentil or mushrooms or other veggies to bulk it up again. Number nine, speaking of meat, look for less expensive cuts of meat, right? So there's lots of different kinds of cuts of meat that are going to vary in price. For example, purchasing a whole chicken versus boneless, skinless chicken breast is gonna be a little bit more cost-effective. You're gonna get more for your money. Um, other things though, like chicken legs with the bone in, chicken thighs, and even just bone in generally will be less expensive. Same with ground beef. Um, even trying a ground turkey instead of a ground beef can be more affordable. And another thing that you can do here to take it up a notch is to look for some meats that are on sale. A lot of times you will find these at the grocery store, sometimes 30 to 50% off. Of course, be sure to look at the best before date, but you can stock up on a couple of packages of these if they are on sale. and sometimes you know just freeze them for future use that's a great way to just kind of keep them stocked up if you don't think you're gonna use them necessarily within the next day number 10 is to stock up on extra staples at a time when they are on sale so anytime that you see certain items that are on sale that you tend to make use of quite a bit or items that have a longer shelf life things like rice beans, um, canned tomatoes, pasta sauces, dried goods, things like this. Um, try to stock, stock up on them. That way it will save you money in the long run. Number 11 is to buy in bulk. Tends to be cheaper per unit when you buy items in bulk, especially things like you know beans, grains, nuts, seeds, flowers, dried fruit, things like this. Um, if you're able to get them in a bigger size or from a bulk store where you can scoop them yourself, then you will save money uh, by doing that versus buying things in smaller um, packages. Number 12 is to shop what is in season, to buy what's in season. Not only are you going to get the freshest fruits and veggies, they're going to taste delicious, but they're going to save you money as well. And the reason for that is because when you are Eating foods that are in season, there tends to be quite an abundance of them from the you know the local crops, but also there's less travel expenses and um, shipping storage expenses that are associated with it when it is local versus shipped from halfway across the, the world. So shopping what's in season, you can go online and look at what's in season in your area. Of course, this is gonna differ um, place to place and also time of year, but definitely something to try and do more often. Again, this is something that you can even meal plan around. Some of the fruits and veggies that are in season in your area right now will save you a little bit of money. Number 13, I definitely do buy some foods organic, but I don't buy every single thing organic, especially if you are on a bit of a budget. We don't need to 
be putting all this pressure on ourselves to be eating so perfectly at all times when it comes to organic food. It is so much better for you to be buying fruits and veggies and eating those that are non-organic than it is to not be eating those at all. Number 14 is to make more meals at home. We all know that generally cooking our own meals, cooking from scratch is gonna save you money versus buying pre-made, salads or pre-chopped fruits and veggies or um, just pre-made meals, things like this. They're, those are gonna be significantly more expensive. If there are certain things that you see at the store that comes pre-made, you know, try to get inspired by that and think of how you can make that yourself, Googling recipes of things that come to your mind that you can just make yourself that maybe you're used to buying pre-made. And on this note, this also goes for like trendy, heavily marketed packaged foods too, even in the health and wellness sphere. And hey, it's totally fine to buy these things sometimes, but a lot of times we can make those ourselves. Maybe there's a pre pre-packaged fancy granola that we see or little snacks or little bites that we see that we can so easily make ourselves at home. Number 15 is to use up leftovers and get creative with what you have already on hand as much as possible. We're reducing food waste, obviously, but what we're also doing is we're kind of burning through our groceries slower um, by using what we already have. So that way we don't need to stock up as frequently on more groceries. So do your best to do things like keeping leftovers toward the front of the fridge so that you can kind of keep that top of mind to use them up. Um, I love using leftovers in a variety of ways. Maybe if you have some chicken that you cooked up for dinner one night, you can use that the next day chopped up in a salad. You can use leftover veggies and things like omelets. There's, or even like throw things into a big pot of stew at the end of the week. Number 16 is to befriend your freezer. You can pretty much freeze anything. I mean, you can't freeze everything, but like you can freeze a lot of things. Whether this is bananas that are starting to um, become overly ripe or a leafy green that you have in the fridge that you're just, you know you're not gonna use up. Seriously, get a nice baggie, pop it in there and freeze it. And you can so easily take those out as needed. Number 17 is to compare your prices. So as we know, for the most part, different stores are gonna sell different items for different prices, especially when we are comparing, you know, maybe shopping at a specialty store or a health food store or a bigger supermarket versus your local discount grocer. Just having an idea of what it is that you're spending your money on for certain types of items that you use a lot at, at a certain location and what it costs somewhere else can be, can be really, really helpful here. A lot of times you will find items for quite a bit cheaper if you're able to get them in maybe bulk sizes at Costco or at a discount grocery store. You can do you know a bit of research here by jotting down, making some notes on what you tend to use the most often and then comparing it store to store online or in person. Number 18 is to opt for in-house versus name brand products at the store. A lot of times we can save money by getting the exact same thing with the exact same ingredients um, from just an in-house brand that your grocery store provides. So just you know, be aware of this and try to read those ingredients and compare if needed and you'll find that you don't always need to buy the fancy marketed one. All right, a couple more points here that I wanna share with you. Number 19, you've probably heard of this one before and that is to not shop when you're hungry. I gotta say, it is so, so true. Especially being pregnant right now, like if I happen to be hungry when we are at the store, um, just throw it all in the cart at this point. Like if you're hungry when you're at the grocery store, things are gonna look so much more appetizing and you're not gonna be able to make the best decisions when it comes to what you're actually gonna need, what you're actually gonna make use of. You're gonna inevitably buy more than you actually need. So try to make sure that when you're heading to the store, you're not going on an empty stomach. And lastly, number 20 I wanna share with you is to try growing your own food. Now, of course, this is gonna completely depend on your situation, how much space you have, how much time and effort you're even willing to put into growing a, you know, different kinds of fruits or vegetables. But um, even if you have a small space, things like 
herbs can be pretty simple to grow, you know, basil, parsley, things like that in little pots, on a balcony, even in your kitchen. That can be a great way to kind of grow a couple of your own things versus needing to buy them all the time at the store. Everyone's different here when it comes to what they're even able to grow, but most people can grow a couple little things um, regardless of how much space they have. So that is it for today's video, how to eat healthy on a budget and 20 grocery shopping hacks to save you money. I hope that there was at least something on this long list that you found useful that you can kind of take away and will hopefully help you to save money the next time you go grocery shopping. If you have any other tips that I did not include in this video, let me know in the comment section below, share them with everybody, um, what other tips that you have for eating healthy on a budget or just um, saving money on groceries generally. I would love to hear from you. I'm sure others would as well. And that's it. I will see you all in the next one.